You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Mark Unfiltered. By going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com, you can make this possible. Look, Lindsey Davis hit Kamala Harris last night with a serious question on criminal justice. Y'all got that sound bite ready for me? Uh, go ahead and play that, uh, the bite where Lindsey Davis uh, asked a very pointed question to send to Kamala Harris. Check this out. People of color is criminal justice reform. Senator Harris, you released your plan for that just this week, and it does contradict some of your prior positions. Among them, you used to oppose the legalization of marijuana, now you don't. You used to oppose outside investigations of police shootings, now you don't. You've said that you changed on these and other things because you were, quote, swimming against the current, and thankfully the currents have changed. But when you had the power, why didn't you try to affect change then? So there have been, um, there have been, I'm glad you asked me this question, and there have been many distortions of my record. Let me be very clear. Uh, I made a decision to become a prosecutor for two reasons. One, I've always wanted to protect people and keep them safe. And second, I was born knowing about how this criminal justice system in America has worked in a way that has been informed by racial bias. And I could tell you extensively about the experiences I and my family members have personally had. But I made a decision that if I was going to have the ability to reform the system, I would try to do it from the inside. And so I took on the position that allowed me, without asking permission, to create one of the first in the nation uh, initiatives that was a model and became a national model around people who were arrested for drugs and getting them jobs. I created one of the first in the nation requirements that a state law enforcement agency would have to wear cameras and keep them on full time. I created one of the first in the nation trainings for police officer on the issue of racial bias and the need to reform the system. Was I able to get enough done? Absolutely not. But my plan has been described by activists as being a bold and comprehensive plan that is about ending mass incarceration, about taking the profit out of the criminal justice system. I plan on shutting down for profit prisons on day one. It will be about what we need to do to hold law enforcement, including prosecutors, accountable. And finally, my plan is about making sure that in America's criminal justice system, we de-incarcerate women and children, that we end solitary confinement, and that we work on keeping families intact. And as President of the United States, knowing the system from the inside, I will have the ability to be an effective leader and get this job complete. Uh, she asked her point blank. You changed some of your positions. Um, why didn't you do those things then versus doing those things now? Again, some people, is, that, is it ready? This week, and it does come. People of color is criminal justice reform. Senator Harris, you released your plan for that just this week, and it does contradict some of your prior positions. Among them, you used to oppose the legalization of marijuana, now you don't. You used to oppose outside investigations of police shootings, now you don't. You've said that you changed on these and other things because you were, quote, swimming against the current, and thankfully the currents have changed. At the power, why do you try to affect change? There, strong question. I still don't understand why Senator Kamala Harris can't answer this question. Well, she claimed. I, I, she, I, I, I don't understand. She claimed she was doing the, and I didn't buy it, frankly, but she claimed she was doing the inside outside strategy that I can't change things for black people or people who are oppressed if I'm on the outside, if I get a job and I'm paraphrasing when I say it, and act like them and do just the same thing they did who are racist, then because I'm on the inside, I can eventually influence it and, and make things better for the community. But I don't think that happened. Well, I think, you know, I'm a native San Franciscan um, who, uh, and Kamala is a friend and a colleague, and I adore her. Uh, I'm not necessarily endorsing nobody for president just yet, but I think that she has a lot of uh, gravitas. I think that she did her best under the conditions that she was dealt with and i think you that mean she, in san francisco 
Yes. Uh, well, and, and, and in the state. I mean, I think that what she did was attempted. Now, I would say attempted. And we have to understand the limitations of elected office. Attempted to make the terms and conditions of black life better. So let me... Let I, me the, the number of black people as, who were incarcerated went down under her. Um, a number of things improved. It wasn't perfect. She didn't... It was not a structural change, but under her, things did improve. And I think you can't ignore that. On the other hand, if, and, and if you run to be a prosecutor, your job is to prosecute. Now, I wish she had better answers, and I wish I could answer the stuff for her, because I would answer it for her. But she was the prosecutor. Yeah. And and, how come and she can't answer him? Look, I'll say this about uh, Senator Harris. Senator Harris is a progressive senator, but she was not a progressive prosecutor or state's attorney. That's right. You know what I mean? She's a progressive senator. Her record, you know, it's just like the Cleveland Browns right now. People say they're a Super Bowl team, but right now they're 0-1. You are what your record says you are. Yep. And so her record in the state of California as a prosecutor. Incarcerations and, went down. Okay, address so, that. Address that. So address, address this. Daniel Larson. Teresa Sheehan. Address how she uh, even went against her own values in, in 2014 and tried to keep the, the death penalty uh, in, in the state of California. She got asked, and you know, you talk about people being taken to task. She got taken to task in the last debate by, uh, by um, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, yeah. look, she had no answers look, for Look, here's it. the deal. Here's the deal. Let, let, let's, first of all, let's, let's just be straight when it comes to these attorney generals, okay? And DAs, all right? Democrats have always been cascaded as being soft on crime. All right? That's always been the case, all right? So the rally is she was a DA, also was attorney general. Yes, there are going to be unpopular decisions that she, that, that she, that she takes. When Lindsay talked about you were now, you're now for legalization of marijuana before you were against it. This is all she had to do. And I'm telling you, it's not that hard. All she had to simply say is a politician should be able to evolve. Yes. I would have said that was a point when Joe Biden and Barack Obama both were against same sex marriage. Hello. Absolutely. When I was supporting it in California. They evolved, and so have I on these issues. Now let me talk about my criminal justice plan. Boom, it's done. The problem as I'm sitting there, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting in the room, is that what she's doing is the same thing Biden does, and most politicians, and frankly most people. People don't want to admit, you know what, I screwed up. That was on me, my bad. So what they do is, they try to dance around it, try to defend it, no, the easiest thing is to own it. That was some issues. That, 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 that was some issues. That was some mistakes. Things I would do differently. And yes, on a number of issues, I have a need evolved. And you know what? We all should. There should be growth for your politician. Boom, move the hell on. But until she gives that kind of answer, I can tell you right now, in the next debate, it's going to get asked again. And the next debate, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get asked again until she's able to answer it that way by simply saying, yes, there were some positions that I took then that I would not take now because I have evolved as a politician, but, period. You but Roland, her the, the, the problem is that, again, if she said she were a progressive senator, I don't think there's, there's anyone who can debate that, but she said she was progressive no, no, but here's the problem. as no, no, a no, 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 which she was not. No, but not. here's the problem. Here's the problem. No, first of all, not first of all, first of all, you have to, well, first no, of all, uh, no, no, Larry Krasner, no, 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 Larry first of all, no, 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 no. See, this is the problem right here, okay? You're trying to define a Larry Krasner progressive in 2019 compared to an early 2000 progressive, okay? You can't. I'm not even sure that, you know. You can't. What? You can't, you, her, her, well, her smart on crime stuff was totally different than some other hardcore the DAs. Sure. She okay. Was the worst. So, so, no, I didn't say the, I, no, I didn't say she was, she was the worst. She wasn't the best. What I'm right. saying is, when you say she wasn't a progressive DA, you then have to define what's progressive. Sure. And, and, again, I, and again, bro, you have to acknowledge uh, that the number of people incarcerated went down under her. And I think that that's very significant. Roland, I totally agree with you about, she, she needs to be so much less defensive 
and just own yes. her record and say, yo, I've changed. But I think that if you look at her record, it's a mixed record. It's not right. a perfect oh, record at all. It's a mixed record, but there is some positivity there that a whole lot of folks are not willing to deal with, and they're pulling a case here, a case there. Well, this, this Supreme, and, 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 the Supreme and, and, Court you've given her You've given her a beautiful script in terms of what to say next time, and I'm sure her people are watching. They're going to probably tap on the show. Did you hear what Roland said? You better, you, better, <laughs> you, you better consider that because that was really, really a powerful script. And, my, and the reason I use the script because that's what it is. I believe from my perspective that just like Biden says what he feels based on his perspective, Kamala saying what she feels based on her perspective. I don't think that she can talk herself out of it. In my opinion, you both are all assuming that she's evolved. I'm not sure she's evolved. Here's the deal. When I, if you look at I don't the, make that assumption. the criminal justice plan that she released on Monday um, is a strong plan. It is strong. Okay. She's running for president. And, but, but, here, but here's the point, though. The point I'm making is if I am going to be solely defined by my past and I lay out here's what I'm going to do, what I'm saying is when you're in that space, I could sit here and get caught up in an old conversation mm -hmm. See what I've done. Same thing. When she went after Joe Biden, Joe Biden simply would not just say right. I agree. two words, three words, I was mistaken. Hello. It was this whole, this is what it was. It was this whole deal. And even if that was your position then, 40 years later, your ass might want to say, my bad. But to sit here and contort yourself and not want to do that, you're making the situation but worse. But Roland, the man was asked a question about the legs of slavery and his perspective back then, and he went from that conversation to talking about poor people and, and black people. Yeah. Well, so I, my point is that we're, we're, we're hoping that, because we, we're comparing him to Trump or whoever, that he's evolved. I'm not sure he's evolved. As a matter of fact, because of how he answered the question, how he changes the subject and not, and not directly responsive to what he was asked about, I think that people are afraid to say what they really feel, so they bumble and bring up a whole other abstract topic. That's not the point. Also, That's what people do when they have not evolved. I'll also say this here. Um, I personally thought, first of all, I thought out of all the candidates, she desperately needed a major win last night. I thought the situation she was sure perfect. Did. The fact that you're the only HBCU graduate, debates on the camp on an HBCU campus. Her strongest point in the debate, let me know if we get that sound bite, was when she talked about funding HBCUs and the importance of black teachers in the classroom. That was uh, great. Three different yeah. times the audience, great applause just within that particular uh, uh, statement. Do we have the sound bite? If we go ahead and play it for right now. First grade teacher, Mrs. Frances Wilson, God rest her soul attended my law school graduation. I think most of us would say that we are not where we are without the teachers who believed in us. I have offered in this campaign a proposal to deal with this, which will be the first in the nation federal investment in closing the teacher pay gap, which is $13,500 a year. Because right now in our public schools, our teachers, 94% of them are coming out of their own pocket to help pay for school supplies. And that is wrong. I also want to talk about where we are here at TSU and what it means in terms of HBCUs. I have, as part of my proposal, that we will put two trillion dollars into investing in our HBCUs for teachers because, because, because one, as a proud graduate of a historically black college and university, I will say, I will say that it is our HBCUs that disproportionately produce teachers and those who serve in these many professions. But Thank also, you, Senator. But this is a critical point. If a black child has a black teacher before the end of third grade, they are 13% more likely to go to college. Mm -hmm. If that child has had two black teachers before the end of third grade, they are 32% more likely to go to college. So when we talk about investing in our public education system, it is at the source of so much. When we fix it, that will fix so many other things. We must invest in the Thank potential you, of our children. Senator Sanders, and I strongly believe you can judge a society based on how it treats its children, and we are Thank failing you, on this issue. But in that, when she talked about, again, values of those teachers, uh, in terms of black teachers, strongest point. And I'm sitting there, and because here's how I sort of see these debates. 
And again, when you're in the room compared to just watching television, I think what happens a lot of time with these candidates is they go, okay, I'm talking to the nation. Yes, but the reality is if I'm able to dominate the room, the room's response is the instant feedback to me that drives me on the energy side and also then plays a part in what I'm seeing at home. I would have come out, I'll tell you right now, because like her opening statement, she was like, glad to be back at TSU. Then but I, was, I was like, okay, that was it? For me, I would I know I would have been saying, first and foremost, this bison is happy to be here in Houston with these Texas Southern University Tigers. What happens? Crowd claps. Student section was down here. Students would have loved it. All right? I would have dropped in an Ocean of Soul reference. Okay? No, I'm serious. I'm you serious. You probably would have talked about the Alphas, too. No, well, of course. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> and, and, what, and I'm, telling you, I'm telling you right now, if I was Kamala Harris and you're an AKA, you damn right, I would have said, let us see some of my sorrows in the audience. Why am I saying that? Because you create that moment where the crowd is, in essence, with you. You create the moment. I'm sitting here last night. Folks, do y'all realize you got, you got Castro on the end? Dude, you were, secret, you were the secretary of HUD under Obama. Right across the street. And when I say across the street, I don't mean down the street. I mean three blocks down. Right across the street from TSU is a massive public housing complex called the CUNY Homes. Right across the street. You could be on TSU's campus, Cleburne Street. Look across the street, it's CUNY Homes. If I'm one of those folks, I'm going to work that in, what I'm talking about. You're, and I'm sitting here just going, that's how you own a stage. You own a place. You feed off of that audience. It reverberates back to you and the folks watching at home. I think coming, I, I, I really believe she needed to own last night. Uh, I don't think it happened. Because here's where I now see this race. And grant nobody has voted. There are three tiers in this race. Top tier is Biden, Sanders, Warren. The second tier is Harris, Buttigieg, maybe Beto. He's like on the, he's on the edge. Well, no, he's on the end of the second tier and the beginning of the third tier. But he lay like right on the line. If you look at the polling number, and then there's everybody else. The problem for Buttigieg and Harris is that those three are solidifying themselves as the top three. She needed to make a move last night. Buddha Judge need to make a move last night to position themselves. I don't think they've done it, and it's going to be harder moving forward. And she also needs to solidify her black support because it's 20, according to the Essence Black Women's Roundtable uh, survey, 26% of black women said, I ain't decided. Okay, Biden's at the top at 26%. She's second. But... If you, don't, if you don't hit that number like Castro, he's performing worse among black women than when Trump is. Bruh, you ain't got a shot. If Trump is 2.3% among black women and Castro, you hit 1%, hmm. it ain't going to do it. Booja, same way. I just think that's, that's sort of where you are this next debate, October 15th and 16th. Yo, it's going to be game on. Otherwise, those top three, people are going to start going. And here's what makes it worse. I want you to speak to this. The first two town halls on CNN, MSNBC, her town halls were the most viewed out of all the candidates. So all the people really wanted to hear from her, I don't think that she has truly uh, written that and really built that sort of momentum. Uh, and I think right now it's going to be a struggle. Well, I think that she, I agree with you. I think that she has had too many opportunities to really solidify her base and she hasn't done it. I think that, as you say, being at Texas Southern, Come on, HBCU, you could have done all kinds of stuff. You would have been. I would I would have invoked. Prince, you would have been prancing across the I would have invoked Barbara Jordan. I would have invoked Mickey Hello. Leland. Yeah. I would, I'm, I'm just letting you know. My deal with it, I would have been super but I would have been super black last night. See, Roland, you, you are speaking from where you live. No, no. See, I'm speaking from research. No. Well, wait, let me. My point is that you research from where you live. You speak from where you live as a black man. That's who you are. I think she's speaking from where she lives, frankly. And she's and, a black and, and, woman, and Cleo, really so let's well, not. I, I think she's a black I was going to be finished. I'm saying, I, I, I think, I, I think what she said was powerful about ch black children. And by the time they get to third grade, when they have a black 
teacher they do better is true and i think that was for her way of trying to wink at black folks trying by saying that. to well no she wasn't well, trying let me, let me, to let me wink. finish let me argue with my, no, argue ahead, with my finished comment she was trying to wink at the black community because she wants the black vote but you're talking about what she, what she could have done better on that campus in the South and took advantage of the cultural issues there. And I don't think that's who she is. But she is a black woman. Uh, culturally, she is a black woman. I didn't say she and she black. has been a black woman. And she is a bison, as Roland has said. She's an AKA. I'm not, as a Delta woman, I Her have Her first meetings were at Howard, wasn't it? Did she break out on the but Howard campus? Right. Right, but I'm, she I'm, she she, she could too. have been stronger on those issues. Booker too. I, I think that she is really attempting to be uh, to reach. Uh, th this was an opportunity for her to, to put her black card on the table, and she didn't do it. She had a she had a home game. This was a home game for her. I know people said it was it was Bethos home game because he's from Texas and also Castro. I really think it was it was her. She had the audience. It's the same thing, you know, I think in the last debate, uh, or the, at least the one that was in Detroit, the fact that, uh, you know, Biden, for number one, didn't talk about, you know, saving the auto industry in Detroit, you know, and, and the things <laughs> that, that they accomplished for the Midwest. And he's supposedly that, you know, working class guy from, you know, a Rust Belt light state. He didn't. He didn't claim the home t the home uh, field, and I think she did the same thing. She made. She missed an opportunity, and I really do believe, even though it's very early, it's still becoming a three-person race. I, I just I, again, I, I and again, not just her. Again, I thought Sheila Cory Booker could have done that. I, I just. I just well, said, I, in a city. Uh, Cory well, no, I, just, I, I don't think that's who he and, is. And, no, 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 no. Actually, I don't no. Think that's Corey. No, no, no. In city. No, actually, he last night. No, actually, hold on. No, no, not true. No, no, hold on. Last Last night, no, 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 hold on, hold on. We're not gonna sit here. I, I'm not We're not gonna play man. this game. We're not gonna play this game. Ooh. We're gonna call her a black woman. He ain't a black man. I, I never said no. he wasn't a black man. Here's the piece. Here's the piece. His answer last night. His answer last night on the issue of guns. When he said, "Oh, don't act like all of a sudden now y'all care because in your community when you ain't been given a damn by black folks who been killed." I thought that was strong. It was strong. Again, yeah. I think I think Senator Cory Booker's biggest problem is he is trying to run the inspirational hope mm. playbook of Obama when what people what Democrats want today is somebody who's gonna fight and I'm, they're like you know what dude the hope no nah, bro we, we be good with that well, see, and so cool that's I, and, and, and that's why Harris I think came out in her opening yeah. statement she was so quick to get to I'm going after Trump I mean literally she's like yeah. glad to be back at TSU boom so I was like uh damn yeah. that was it yeah I thought that was not only did she go after Trump she was talking to Trump yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought like, that was a mistake. Actually, why are you talking actually, to Trump? I no, I, I, no, I, 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 thought, that was, I thought that I think was good. It was right See, on top I because think I think that Trump basically don't care. the bottom line here is what do Democrats want? They want that orange orangutan out of the house that enslaved people built. But we know they want this. that man out of there. And so she put that out there. It, you know, although right. the conversation is among Democrats, the bottom line is get that it's fool contrived. out But of talk there. to us. It's contrived. Give us something to vote for. Don't talk to yeah, Trump. We already know how you know what I mean? bad she Trump says, is. You, you'll get an opportunity. If you win this thing, you'll get an opportunity to talk to Trump no, face no. to face. No, here's, talk, here's, to, talk to me. No, no, tell no, me what no, I'm no, voting no. for. No, the, 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 no the, the move there, the reason that what, that move was also smart, because what she was also signaling was, I'm not about to get into a scrum with the rest of y'all on stage. So that's why I got a Castro, you could throw there. And so that was sort of saying, I'm not going to attack fellow Democrats. I'm going after Trump. I got that. All, 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 I'm, all I'm saying is, when you look at where this race is right now, and again, this to me is the last preseason game, regular season now starts. The problem is, those top three, they're in double digits. Okay? You're in double digits. And I'm telling you right now, I have been saying this for months. People kept telling me I was crazy. The you one, are. The one candidate, the one, the one <laughs> candidate, the one candidate who y'all, everybody better keep paying attention to. And I said it when she got in, is Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Because I have talked to black female activists. There are black, there are black women who I'm talking to are like, yay, hey, we like Senator Harris, we like Bernie, but she's appealing to them. That's right. true. And I'm telling you, if you're Biden and if, and, if you, and if you're Sanders, that's the person to watch out for. And if you look at that, that uh, uh, Essence Black Women's Roundtable survey, 
Warren was right below, right below Harris. Harris needs that gap to be wider. You do not want Elizabeth Warren all of a sudden to start polling 18, 20, 22 percent among black women. That's what's going to vault her to number two, potentially number one. Well, let me if, think. Uh, if, if you look at the history of black women, uh, and especially black sorority women, AKs, Deltas, et cetera, you're looking at teachers. And Elizabeth Warren appeals to people as a teacher. I mean, she really breaks stuff down as a teacher. Precisely. She, she's an educator, and she comes out from that. I mean, she's not flash and dash, but she breaks stuff down. Joe I mean, Madison that's what said you got to put it where the goats can get it. Yeah. She makes it simple, but you don't understand and go, oh, really? Right. Yeah, and, and, and that and is that's effective. appealing to right. that's it's appealing effective. to black women. Right. It's appealing to women in general because a lot of women are tired of the rhetoric and want to hear. And she says, I've got a plan for that. Now, that may yeah. be a cliche. But, yeah. I, but on the other hand, the plans she have are detailed. And she's letting right. them out there. I'm a man, and I, and I appreciate that. And I'm an educator, so I, I like, uh, you know, a, a lot of what Elizabeth Warren says. I think also we have to remember, I was just looking at a poll in New Hampshire that came out that has Kamala in fifth behind Tulsi Gabbard, who wasn't Lord. even on the stage. So she really, you know, I, I think she, if she wants to break out, she needs a real serious breakout moment if you're losing the people who weren't even on the stage. But she, has a, but she has a difficult journey. I think she could. I think she has the intellect to do it. But remember when Barack first first um, debated Romney? Remember that first debate? Oh, right. Yeah, the pitiful debate. The one nobody. Well, from from my perspective, what Barack, what Barack was going through was not offending white people. He didn't want to offend white people, so he could not lose his possibility of be back, being back in office for another four years. Dang, what happened? Well, that's my perspective. You know what, Cleo? He didn't want to be there. Okay. It was his damn anniversary. He didn't want to debate. He was <laughs> mad. He was okay. ornery. He, he was well, like, look, I ain't trying right. to be here. And he was like, if he, and when he came out, his whole team was like, damn, that sucked. Because he, he didn't want to be there at all. He, it was like he okay. just had his whole But I tell you what, but I tell you what, and, the, and this happened in front of everybody's eyes. The next, what, what happened after that horrible debate was he had Bill Clinton, Joe Biden, and a bunch of white men saying, talking for him. Well, first of all, remember, after the first debate, there was a vice presidential debate. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then, and then Biden uh, went after, went after uh, whoever uh, that boy Romney had as his running mate. <laughs> Ryan. Uh, right. Ryan. That's right, Paul Ryan. Okay. <laughs> and then there was a second debate. Right. But what happened there was Michelle was like, uh, it's time to show up. Okay. So the first well, one, he was, he was yeah. more concerned about going on a date with her on the okay. anniversary well, he than the doggone scared. presidential debate. He, his face. He I didn't want to be there. I, I can read, I can I read facial scared. gestures. Yeah, well, well, watch he it again. He looked pissed. He looked disinterested. No. He didn't want to be there. And anyway, I want to make my point. he got trounced. I want to make my point. But guess what? To me. Him getting trounced in the debate didn't mean nothing because the race is already locked in. The votes are already there. That's a different dynamic than a primary. But go ahead. I think that Kamala Kamala? Kamala, Kamala is trying to make sure that she winks at black folks and keep that vote and not lose the white vote. And I think she needs to get the black folks. She's well, well I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about intentionality, not necessarily what actually going to occur. Yeah, everybody. But I think the intentionality well, is I'm starting off at the, at the HBCUs. I'm doing this black. I had some hot sauce at the barbecue shack. Oh, please. She, well, she did, though. Yeah, but so, I, and she's she, 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 let me finish my let me finish my purse right over she's doing. Yeah. Like like look, look, this is real simple. All the candidates who are you running, bottle, all right? the candidates well, who are running, right over there. look, all, all, all the candidates who are running want to have sort of this broad based appeal. The problem is this here. There are so many people in the race. The reality is you must lock down your lanes. And so that is, OK, what exactly is my base? And so, yes. When Warren hits on the stage by saying, I think I'm the only person up here who's been a public teacher, okay? What she's actually saying is, teachers, I need y'all to be for me, locking down the base. Sure. And so, the, so the point I'm making, which is why I said, I thought Harris should have owned the stage last night, you have to lock down bases. Even though Biden is doing very well among older black voters mm -hmm. and voters who are 50 plus, okay? <clears throat> then that should say, okay, Look at the numbers. There's still 26% of those black women who ain't decided. All right? So go I, got, I got room to grow. How do I appeal to mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the other candidates, Castro. Castro, in, since 
2016 when he was on the short list for Hillary Clinton and now did not lock down Latinos. Didn't. He's p still polling so low because what's your natural base? And so you still have de Blasio out there, Delaney out there. You still got Bennett out there. You still got about, there are about eight, Tim Ryan. You got about eight people who needs to drop out. What's going to happen is this race, I would dare say by November, this race should be down to about, t wow. about, t no, about 10 people. They'll stick around. They'll stick around okay. because the calendar has changed. Remember, it used to be Iowa, New Hampshire, or your bust. Well, early voting in California is actually going to be happening before they even vote in Iowa. So you take a Buddha judge. A Buddha judge is doing very well right now in California. So he may not do well in Iowa and New Hampshire, but he might do well in California. So the map changes. I, I'm just thinking it again. I don't think it's going to be 10, though, Roland. I think, I mean, okay, my five might be low. I think your 10 is high. Maybe we're just talking seven. Good, baby. Uh, you know, because I think that, you know, some of the, the scrubs are going to leave. You got the top three. They're going to stay. I think Harris. Yeah, some of the scrubs are going to leave. But remember, it's about 18 of them still around. <laughs> I mean, no, and then remember, the next debate, Tom Steyer is already qualified. So, okay, he's, yeah. so now, so he's in. And so, I, look, at the, at the end of the day, all the stuff back and forth now, now you have to say, wait a minute, what's my lane? Because if I'm looking at this race over a four-month period, I got I to gotta stay in it. So where do I win or where do I come in second? That's the key. All right, where do I win or come in second? If I got a series of third and fourth place finishes, it ain't going to happen. Well, Warren, so that's Warren, what I'm looking at. Warren is in a good position in terms of style because she's never tentative. She's always banned. There you go. But I think people who are tentative, which I won't say no names so I won't get interrupted no more, are tentative, <laughs> are tentative for a reason. There are reasons why they're tentative because they're doing more negotiating, in my opinion, around race and around perception and optics, blah, blah, blah. You. Warren ain't tripping. She's like, bam. And that's a privilege, frankly, right. which for her is, not to have to do all that nuance which, thing which, and which, say exactly what she feels. Which has been helpful which for her, with Bush, which is I mean, also with, uh, why, Obama. frankly, even like last night, not like we went after Sanders last night. It's sort of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, how do you build upon what is already, what is already your base? If, if, if you're Sanders, how do you now go from where you are to the next level uh, to be Biden? Prozac. The dude, I mean, the dude hollers. Prozac. Like, <laughs> that is, uh, dude, seriously. I mean, I was watching something on CNN this morning, and they were talking about, they were undecided voters, about 10 of them. Two of them flipped to Warren. The rest of them had uh, Warren and uh, Biden, as a couple people had Castro. But the th everybody talked about how Sanders is so darn shrill. The dude just hollers. See, I, I mean. I, I personally, you know, I read that as passion, and I actually hey, like passion. it. And, I think and uh, the a, fact that he's a little, old white I think you're a minority. Uh, no, he's no, a little no, ornery. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, up, I don't mind up, a little orneriness. Jason, how old are you? I'm 41. Julian, how old are you? I'll be 66 in two weeks. And Send that, me presents. And that, <laughs> and that is also the difference. But what you have is younger voters want to see passion and a fighter. Older voters want to see if you guys know what the hell you're talking about. Here's the problem for younger voters. Here's the problem. Both. No, no, but here's the problem for younger voters. They asses don't vote at the same level. Your demo, your demo does not vote at the same level as Julian's demo. That's true. Julian's demo is like, y'all can take y'all young asses out there. Y'all can be happy with all the passion you want to. They going to double up your demo. In like 1834, I keep telling you, all all y'all, and again, I want I people who are 1830. It don't matter. I, <laughs> I want 1834 out there voting, but this is not rocket science. People who are between the ages of 18 and 45 outnumber baby boomers, but baby boomers vote like we crazy. They we vote like we crazy. Ain't, it ain't. We well, ain't debating. It gonna be. It's gonna be rain. It's gonna listen. be snow. They gonna vote. Well, if, if if baby boomers want cheaper prescription drugs and want and want good health care, then perhaps they should consider. Uh, Jason, consider that, that argument oh, not gonna no. fly, Jason. But you know what, Jason? It's no, logical, we can consider Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, no, I, as far as I'm concerned, frankly, uh, for, I was finished with him in 2016. 
a lot he's of shrill. people were. He's shrill. Uh, he, he and Trump are you two, know they said that two about sides Hillary, of the same coin. Oh, no. They are. Oh, they no. are. No. They all shrill, are. They all, they all two sides no, of the same coin. No, no, no. crazy white men who howl. I I'm trying to all tell y'all. No, no. I'm I, I was with you, Julian. I was with you, Red Bone, but you went the Red wrong Bone. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Passive aggressive, passive aggressive. <laughs> I'm trying to warn y'all. They did that again. You're doing the same thing they did to Clinton. She's two sides of the same coin. She's well, shrill. They did the same no, thing to Clinton. No, also, frankly, for Jason, you know, we know, and I know, you know, and I know that white none of these occupied. white people get race correctly, and sure. Bernie gets it less than many. I think Elizabeth Warren gets it, and she gets the intersection of race and gender uh, in ways that appeal to me. I'm not endorsing her or anything. Like I said, Carol, my girl, but I, I, I want to see how this thing plays out. But Bernie turns me off. He truly turns me off. I'm telling you, if you, stu if you he wrote study, the damn bill. if you study, he wrote the damn he wrote the bill. The damn but, bill. But, but Amy Klobuchar said, I read the damn bill. Here's the piece here, and again, <laughs> here, here, I'm telling you, moving forward, this is what people are going to be looking at. Out of all, uh, they're going to be looking at Biden's ability to talk policy and be empathetic. Tone also matters. Yes. Warren, talk policy and be empathetic. Do you understand my plight? The answer is yes. Senator Sanders has to deal with why are you yelling at me? That I don't care. Harris. Why are you yelling? How, comb your hair. Biden's, ha Harris, not, Biden's not going to get the young vote. He messed no, up with the record no, no, player. No, no, he should have no, said no, DVD no. or Biden, Bluetooth. His deal, though. His but deal, he said though. record player. He messed up. DVDs Biden, are obsolete, Y'all, Biden, <laughs> Biden don't need the young <laughs> vote to win the primary. <laughs> okay, y'all got to go. Did y'all forget 2016? Trump walked through the Republican side. He didn't need 40%. All he needed was 32-35. Biden. As long as you have 10, 12 people in the race, I'll need 50%. It's about winning the primary. And so that's going to be the issue. That's why I'm saying if 8 to 10 people drop out, that now changes the dynamic. If 10 people drop out who are now polling at 1%, that's 10% of the populace who now have to make a decision. Where does that 10% go? Who does it shift to? And that's sort of where this thing is going. Watch the every. Everything will change. The next debate is October 15th. Watch the shift then. If nobody is able to hit Biden and to put a dent in his lead, this is going to be, this, this is going to be the ball game, and he's going to sit here and take 35 and 36% and win Iowa. He's going to say, fine, Bernie and Warren, y'all can go ahead and fight out New Hampshire. He's going to go down to Nevada, likely win there. And then when he goes to South Carolina and them old black folks vote, he's going to be sitting there with three of the first five states or th uh, four of the first five with wins compared to one. This is going to be about how do you connect with me as a voter? Even he screws up it's his, his tone and his policy. I'm just saying, Harris, she has somewhat of the tone, has the policy. But you gotta, un but you gotta talk to that voter in a way. You gotta connect. And she and hasn't connect. She's connected she's with some tentative. people. She hasn't connected with enough people, and she has not connected with the black people who should be her natural base. There you go, and that's also why Cory Booker is the polling so low as well. Because again, in politics, it's your natural base. Well, he don't have and you no build, base. And you build upon that. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth, the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at more than $340 billion. Of course, marijuana, marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill recently passed in Congress, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants. Folks, this is simple. It's an incredible investment opportunity. And that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. 
they are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. And what they've done for the folks who Martin and Unfiltered is allow for you to make a minimal investment of 200 bucks. The initial investment was $500. You can invest this, this in the crowdfunding campaign. That's right, 200 bucks up to $10,000. Now, again, all you got to do is go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org to get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.